Hey friends, what's up and welcome back. So in this week's video, I wanted to go over the jujitsu terms and positions that I believe every white belt should know. Before we get started, I wanted to thank my girl Anjanette for helping me with this video. She is the best and I am so grateful for her. The first position on our list today is the closed guard. In this position, I have my feet locked on the small of her back and I also have double cuff grips on her sleeves. Another very common grip is the classic collar sleeve. When I have the collar or lapel grip on the same side as my hand, my thumb goes on the inside and four fingers on the outside. Here, I am moving from the same side lapel to a cross grip, where I now have four fingers on the inside and my thumb on the outside. You always want to make sure your thumb is on the top of your collar grips. From the closed guard, the partner inside the leg's objective is to keep a strong posture and base and do what is called passing. Passing is breaking open the guard, getting out and around your partner's legs and advancing to a more dominant position, establishing control on the top. The partner on the bottom's objective is to attack for the submission or do what is called a sweep. A sweep is going from the bottom to a top from a guard. Side control. The partner on the bottom needs to have their arms in tight known as frames or framing while their legs are bent allowing them to bridge to create space so they can work on escaping and recovering. It is common to have one arm framing against the hip and the opposite arm framing across the shoulder. Partner on the top will get a cross face and the back arm underneath is the underhook. And here I am getting a classic gable grip, head looking towards their feet and my knees are in tight. For side control, the partner on the bottom's job is to one, stay safe and defend from submissions, two, escape the position by recovering a guard, reversing or wrestling, and three, not allowing the partner on the top to advance position to knee on belly, mount or back with hooks. While the partner on the top is trying to control, submit or advance position. So, partner on the bottom, you are trying to safely create space and partner on the top, you are trying to take that space away, apply pressure, remain in control, and be ready to transition when you need. Next up, knee on belly. Partner on the top, you will take your shin and place it just above your partner's belt line. You want to make sure that you do not keep your toes planted on the floor. You want the partner on the bottom carrying all of your weight. You can either point your toes or hook your partner's hip, but if you place the foot on the floor, one, you are not as heavy for the partner on the bottom, and two, you give them a post to push off of when they are trying to escape. This makes it more difficult for you to move with them when they are trying to escape. From here, you can place your hands on your partner's shoulders and your opposite leg will go out for post. A few things for your post leg. You wanna make sure you don't have your post too high. You wanna make sure you do not have your knee on the ground and you wanna make sure that it's not too close to your partner. It should be out long and strong. Full mount. Partner on the bottom, keep those frames and legs up. So often I see students in my fundamentals class laying flat with their arms out. Big no-no. That's the best gift for the partner on the top. Now, partner on the top, you want your chest low, arms long, knees in tight, and feet tucked underneath your partner's hips. Partner on the bottom, you are trying to escape safely. Partner on the top, you are trying to maintain control and hold your mount position. You work so hard to get there, now you don't wanna lose it. I always like to challenge the white belts who take my class to really try and hold the mount. Not to the point where you're just smothering your partner for a four minute round, but really try to figure out what works for you to be able to keep and control the mount. Then you can start to work on your submissions. And partner on the bottom, when you're just starting out, my biggest advice to you is to breathe. Now, really quickly, I just wanted to touch base on a few different kinds of mount. You have full mount. Then here you have the high mount where I move my weight off of my partner's hips and up higher onto their chest. Then there is also what we call the grapevine where your hips are low on your partner's hips and you weave your legs underneath theirs, making it very difficult for them to bridge. 
Back with hooks. My arm going over the shoulder is called the overhook, and my opposite hand going underneath my partner's armpit is the underhook. I'm clasping my hands with a ball and socket grip, and this control is called a seat belt. Next, I need to get my hooks. This is where I place both feet in front of my partner. You can place both of your feet together, but be mindful never to cross them like we do in the closed guard. This can be a nasty setup for an ankle lock and can also put uncomfortable pressure on your knees if your partner ends up belly down. Now for the objectives, partner on the back, your job is to control and submit. Partner in the front, your job is to defend and escape. Half guard. In half guard, you are doing what is called a triangle on your partner's leg and you are getting on your opposite side, ready to block your partner's cross face. You block the cross face by framing on their shoulder and their wrist to ensure that you are able to stay on your side and keep comfortable distance and not letting them come in and squish you with their cross face and underhook. Partner on the top, your job is to pass the half guard by getting your leg free and controlling your opponent, while partner on the bottom, you can either sweep and come up to the top or recover your full guard. Now let's finish off with a few grip terms. I know this knowledge helped me a lot as a white belt. So first we have the gable grip, where all five fingers are together and you are palm to palm. Next up we have the S grip, where I have one hand on the top and one hand on the bottom, and I am curling my fingers in and together like the letter S. From my S grip, I can now transition into what is called a ball and socket grip. I have one hand clenched like a fist, and my opposite hand is coming up and over and holding on tight to my wrist. And for the last grip on my list, we have the pretzel grip. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, would you mind just leaving a thumbs up for me? And please, if you have any ideas, go ahead and write them in the comments. If there's something that you wanna know or something that you wanna see, by all means, let me know and I will do my best to make that video for you.